happiness through curiosity on TRS Clips. In Canada, there's actually a squad now because I started that in our in in, uh, in our police force uh, next to Kin Squad. Because if somebody dies, that person will remember for the rest of life how the police officer approached and the words and tonality that was used. Okay. So we actually became, uh, we, 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 I, then I started to train other officers how you would go, how would you look at that person and how, which words to use, how, which emotions to use, never make a phone call and don't do this, show up and how to say to an Indian person, how to say to an Asian person like Chinese, how to say to white. So we had a little bit of that because the, the Indian um, uh, wife, for example, may uh, react to our husband's death differently. You know, they may start wailing, like start to scream and cry. And then the, the white officer's like, well, what happened? You know, and when they go to the, the other one and the white uh, our wife, she may just be quiet. Uh, Chinese uh, father, for example, Asian fathers, for example, they find out. I remember going to him and saying, your daughter just died. And he just, I mean, I know he's hurting, but he just said, um, how? And I told her, told him, and he goes, thank you. Like, I, so, so I was teaching them different modalities of, you know, there's going to be different reactions, but respect and, and, and follow up with those people because the words you say that moment is going to slow down for these people the moment you say i have a bad news for you your whatever just died whatever however they died they are going to remember that for the rest of their lives okay and and then what happens after that confusion funeral arrangements people. So I used to have my officers go in and I used to do this as well. I used to say, I'm here as long as you need me. And you need, uh, who's your uh, brother? Who's, who's your family? Who's this? Then we make the phone calls, brought them in, take them, sit down, give them my card. This is what it is. Call me anytime you want. I mean, when I say all the time, they, you know, obviously at night they wouldn't call me, but they would be respected to the point where their loss gets reduced a little bit. I mean, you can't just bring them back, I get it. But you know, after months, six months, a year, some of those people came back to me and said, what you did was the best thing, you know, and they would cry, they would cry, yeah. How do people deal with the death of a loved one over time, especially if it's a violent death? Um, Again, um, different uh, cultures, I've seen that. And um, they say that um, over time, things will get better or you forget or something like that. But the truth is nobody, you don't ever forget. You don't ever forget, especially on special days, birthdays, Diwali, Christmas, whatever. You, you never forget. You, it's there, always there. Um, and, and so the, if they died naturally versus an accident versus... Uh, got murdered and if they did get murdered then was the justice served did the bad guy got uh, justice that they thought was justice and if the bad guy actually got off completely then the reaction are different now there are very small group of people that would say I forgive you I forgive that person and I've moved on there are people like that there are very monks and they're, they worked on themselves, right? They worked on themselves and they say, you know, I need to let this go because it's good for me and my family. And if I let this go, it doesn't mean I less that I, I love that person less. But there are very few people. But if um, somebody who did something bad to their family, especially, and again, is it a father? Is it a son? Is it a young child? Is it a wife? Is it a husband? Wife will deal with differently, for example, than the husband, for example. If a husband is wealthy, well off, and the wife gets killed, um, probably a few years down the road, he remarries. Not that he'll forget the first wife, but it's easier for him than if he was completely poor or, or, or their you know, relationship was different, for example. And if the wife, uh, unfortunately, a lot of time it was the wives that I used to go to and say, your husband died. 
it's just it was in my in my career i saw most men die than women die because most men were the ones who were working outside they're driving trucks they're you know they're doing drugs and they're doing bad things and women were not as bad in that area in, in uh, crime wise per se so it was always like i used i walk in i remember walking into it was a simple it was a, a husband driving at night at 2 a.m probably doing like 200 kilometers and uh, he lost it, rolled over, his body got smashed, and then he was all over the road, uh, physically all over the road. So after I was in charge, so nobody was there for next of kin. So we basically called the next of kin people. Nobody was there. So I said, you know what? I'll just go myself. So I, and then I took a young officer with me. So then he learns from me. And I walked down, I, I, and then you, it was like 7 a.m. and she opens the door and very typical wife, high officer. And then she, she says, hello, and all that stuff. She says, come on in. We came in. And, uh, and now she's saying, Johnny, get ready. Your father is going to be here very soon. Joe, you need to get ready very, very quickly. You got to go to the school. Come on, let's get ready. I'm so tired. I got your breakfast ready. And then she looked at us and she said, oh, so I'm sorry. Please, please have a seat. Please have a seat. I'm just running late right now. And another. we know what's about to happen, right? And she has, and her, her energy is so powerful, so beautiful, so positive. And, 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 and uh, just to know seconds before and then see them seconds after. I see the whole world melt in front of my eyes, in, their, in them. Their world just, I can look at their face and their world just psh, gone, right? So, so once I told her that, um, and, and, and we were taught, don't say pass away. Don't say uh, he's gone to another world or whatever. Why? Um, certain cultures pass away could mean he just passed on to some other street or he walked away to something like that. So there were times when somebody walked in and said, hey, I uh, just wanted to, I'm sorry to tell you, that's a bad news that your, your, your son just passed away. Oh, okay, that's fine. Thank you. No, 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 you don't understand. Your son passed away. And they thought it was like, if they don't hear the, so basically the training was, use the word dead. I'm sorry to tell you, but your son just died and didn't wait. Just look at them and say, wait. And then their reaction is usually either they fall to the ground or they come into your arms or they start crying or they, they, they ask you to repeat, right? Or they say something like, oh, this can't be, it's not possible. Not my, what, what? No, no, not mine, you know? So that is um, where I'm, I have to be ready for their reaction, right? And, um, and then they ask, like, what happened? And then we have to do all the arrangements and, and things like that. And the main thing is, my main thing is their safety now, uh, their mental health and, and what they're going to do. Now their two young kids are sitting there. So we, we tell the kids to, you know, can you uh, have your kids go into a room for a while? I just want to talk to you personally. So now she knows, but the kids don't know. And, uh, you know, they're waiting for their father to come home. Father's never coming home. And uh, now she wants to see the dead body. We can't really show her the dead body because how he looks right now. Um, and, and then we have to prepare her that even if eventually a few days down the road, we have to prepare her that actually, um, you know, this is the case where, you know, he's, he's unrecognizable, actually, you know. He's unrecognizable. So I have seen a human body spread over half a kilometer where we were just picking up pieces of body pieces or body parts of each and then try to kind of put it together. But you can't, you know, the face is gone. Because what happens is in, 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 a, in a fight or, or, or racing or accidents, um, the skin, if it's a motorcycle, for example, or, or the car flipped many times, the skin just comes off, like it just grinds to the, you know, it's just gone. And, um, and then we, in, in Canada, we shut down the whole highway and we hire somebody and we properly package with respect and all that. And there are times you can't recognize, like when I walk to, uh, some places, you can't even recognize that's a human being, even if they're in the same one part. So those things stick around with you as well, because you, you can take the smell home. You can take the smell home. Yeah. That smell human being dead smell it's very unique very different what is it like um 
to me, it stinks. It is it is something that you can't even, you know. I, I used to put um, some sort of ointment in my ear, in my nose, just so I can just look at that, because a lot of young officers will go up and they'll start throwing up because it's not only the visual, but the but but the, but the essence of dead body and then after that there's most of the time there's post-mortem which i have attended they're they're also brutal to me they're brutal and and in, in canada as a oic uh, officer in charge you must attend the uh post-mortem with the doctor and you must be present in the room because you are almost like a witness to the doctor okay and then doctor is exp- i remember the first time i went uh, uh, to post-mortem and the doctor is just, you know, he's got a uh, saw and he's sawing this off and with the dust flying in the air. I couldn't even, like, I, I, it was the smell. Smell was just like, you know, and then, and you're breathing in this air with all this dust, right? And he opens up and then he says, you see this? I said, no, I don't see it. He goes, give me your hand. So I had a glove on and he put my hand inside the head and he oh. said, you feel this? I said, yes. And he goes, you shouldn't be feeling this. That means it's broken. Okay? The neck is broken. So he basically helped me with that. And I, I just, it was disgusting. Like, I, it was disgusting. And then, then the intestines. I don't know. I never felt it before, ever. He pulls out the intestine. If you ever felt the worst washroom on the planet, and somebody, like 100 people, went and pooed in that washroom and didn't clean it, that's what it, feel, looks, it smells like. And he pulls it out and you can just, uh, and then he has to weigh them, each of those parts. Why? I don't know. I don't know why doctors do that. <laughs> and, and it's usually it's the cause of death. Is there's any issues? Is there's this suspicious? So if, if, if somebody got stabbed by a knife, they also want to know what caused the death. Was it ruptured? Was, what was the first thing? It's more about being so accurate so then they can tell and they can study in the future why things happen, how it happens. And, and they can go in the court and say precisely, this is how it happened. This is how the knife went in or when went in. Oh, that's why. It so they just do it as a you know, check mark procedure. You know? And then if, what if they weigh something that is double the size? They're going to go, why is this double the size? Maybe he was poisoned. Maybe there was a reason for that. So that's why they do it, everything. And and and, and I'm, I I can remember that smell today, post-mortem smell today, because that smell is so distinct and, and, and not a good smell, really disgusting smell. So those are the experiences that stay with you sometimes when you're a police officer. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to TRS Clips for more.